You will learn everything you need to know about dog booting, Linux and Windows in this video. I assume you already have Windows installed on your computer and you just need to install Linux to dual boot. I will start with BIOS settings that are necessary to dual boot Linux and Windows. Next I will show you how to shrink your Windows partition to get free space for your Linux. Of course I will quickly show you how to install Linux using Linux Mint as an example. In the end I will show you how to set boot order in your computer in order to see this menu where you can choose between Windows and Linux to boot. Finally I will explain you why I am not a fan of dual booting and why I recommend installing Windows in a virtual machine as I have showed in one of my previous videos. Also before you apply any of the actions you see in this video, please back up all your data. Without further ado, let's get started. BIOS Unfortunately, most of the computers have BIOS configured specifically for Windows. And likely you won't be able to install Linux on it without changing some settings. BIOS interface may differ from one computer to another, but the main settings are there. I will use my Acer Swift 1 laptop as an example here. If you also want to have such a laptop and run Linux on it, I provide a link in the description. First, you need to get into BIOS. Usually, you just have to press a specific key during the boot. In my Acer Swift one, I press F2. Just Google your computer model and BIOS key term and you will find the key you need to press. Sometimes you may also see it on the screen during the boot. Next, you may need to set a password in your BIOS because it won't allow you to change any security settings without a password set. This is the menu to set the password on my computer. You should be able to find the same in your BIOS. It is also possible that you can proceed without setting a password. Next, you need to go to the boot menu and disable secure booting. If you are new to BIOS, check this description on the right. It explains how to navigate and change options in your BIOS. You also need to move your bootable USB flash drive to the first place in the boot order. I am not going to stop here on how to create a bootable USB drive. I will leave a link to my videos on how to create a bootable Linux USB in the description. Next go to the exit menu and exit with saving the changes. If you have done everything correctly, you should boot in your live USB Linux system. Get free space for Linux. I use Linux Mint installer here, if you use Ubuntu or any Ubuntu based distro, the process will not differ at all. If your distro is not Ubuntu based, you still need to do the same steps as you will see in this video, but the program look and options may look slightly different. To install Linux alongside Windows, you actually can select such an option in the installation wizard. It will automatically create free space on your hard drive and install Linux there. However, if you want to have little more control over how much space you allocate to Windows and Linux, you can get free space and assign it to Linux manually. This is what I prefer to do. Most of the Linux distros have gparted included in a live ISO. If it is not, install it from the software center. After you have opened gparted, you need to select the hard drive with your Windows installed. This is how my Windows hard drive is partitioned. As you can see, I will do a UEFI installation. You need to select the largest partition, click on partitions menu and select resize. At this step, we will shrink the Windows partition to get free space for Linux. All white space is free space. So you can shrink this partition with your mouse or by selecting its size precisely with the numbers. You can take a maximum of free space for Linux if you aim to use mainly Linux, but leave some free space for Windows too. It may not be able to work without free space left. Click Resize. Read this warning to know the risk. Check how your partitions will look like after you apply the resizing. This is the free space we will use to install Linux. So far, no changes to your hard drive have been applied. It is only a plan of actions. You can cancel everything at this step if you have done a mistake somewhere. If you are happy with your partition table, click apply. Note, this action will be irreversible. Resizing will take some time. 
Hopefully it will finish successfully and you can proceed with installation. Install Linux. To install Linux, click on the install icon on your desktop or in your menu. The installation process is pretty standard. I recommend to include the third-party software in the installation. As I mentioned before, you can select this option to install Linux alongside Windows automatically. But I personally prefer the manual way. So select something else. Manual way not only gives you more control, but it also helps to understand what happens to your system when you install two systems alongside each other. This screen shows you the partitions of your hard drive. You need to select the free space we have created in the previous step. Click Add to create a Linux partition in this free space. You can keep these options at default, but importantly, you need to assign a mounting point to this partition. You need to select the root point here. You can also split this free space into two parts and assign one to the system and another one to swap. But I believe it is much better to use a swap file. Ubuntu installers create a swap file by default. I made a video explaining swap before. You can watch it by clicking on this card. Next, you need to select the EFI partition. It is usually of several hundred megabytes in size. Make sure it is detected as EFI. Bootloader installation doesn't matter here because it will be UFI installation, so bootloader will be installed in the EFI partition. You can keep the default selection here. Check that only the new Linux partition will be formatted, because if you have other partitions selected for formatting, be careful, you will lose all the data stored in those partitions. If everything is fine, click install. Agree to continue. While the system is installing, select your location, provide your user information, set the password, and then just wait until the system is installed. If you are curious, you can see what's going on here. After the installation, reboot the system. Also, do not forget to remove your installation USB when you are requested to do so. You should see this group menu after the reboot. Here you can select what you want to boot, Linux or Windows. Set the boot order. If it happens that after the reboot you booted directly in your Windows and you did not see any Linux menu, do not get upset. Likely, you have done everything right and you just need to change the boot order in your BIOS, like I had to do. In the main tab of your BIOS, find the boot menu and enable it. Now you can press F12 to get the boot BIOS menu at startup. It will look like this and you actually can boot your Linux directly from this menu. But it is better to make it boot automatically. So back in your BIOS, go to the boot order and you should see an additional boot option that appeared here after you installed Linux. In my case it is still called Windows Boot Manager but without the code in the brackets. This is actually my Linux boot file. I don't know why BIOS branded it as a Windows. So I make it a first boot option and save the changes. After the reboot, you should see this group menu. Here you can select between Linux, which will boot by default in 10 seconds, or Windows. If you still boot into Windows by default, try to open the boot menu during the start of your system. In my case it is F12 key. I press it during the startup of my system and I see this menu, where I can choose Ubuntu. And this loads the group Linux bootloader. So Linux works, you just need to check your boot order settings, maybe Linux is not the first option there. Try different orders in your boot order, until you get Linux booting the first. Why I do not recommend dual booting? First, if you use Windows in dual boot, it is possible that some of updates of Windows may break your Linux installation. Theoretically, it should not happen, but it happens. Maybe Windows updates just break Linux bootloader. I don't know. Second, if you dual boot, you will never switch to Linux. If you are used to Windows, you will keep booting into your Windows system and it will not be convenient to reboot to get into Linux. You will not use Linux much and thus you will never completely switch to Linux. On the other hand, if you prefer to use Linux, 
Windows partition will just take extra space and Windows takes a lot of space, which will not be used, so it is inefficient use of your hard drive. So in this case, dual booting is not good either. I recommend using Windows in a virtual machine. This way, you can access your Windows system from within Linux and you don't need to reboot. Of course, your Windows will be less powerful than if it was installed natively on a hard drive, but you still can do most of the things you will do in a Windows. You can see my video on how to install Windows 10 in a virtual box on the screen right now. Please watch it and maybe you will like that option more than dual booting. Thank you for watching.